Hey, it's Link, and I finally finished a couple of Max for Life devices, which I'll be releasing as soon as I finish making this video. So if you're watching this video, you can go to my Gumroad and download Spray and Expander. So what do these things do? Well, Spray is a cascade of 48 or up to 48 all-pass filters, and an all-pass filter will flip the polarity of the audio signal at the cutoff frequency. And if you do that a bunch of times in a row in series, then what ends up happening is the frequency spectrum is more delayed at the frequency of the cutoff and less delayed away from the cutoff frequency. It sounds really cool. Basically, it makes things sound kind of squelchy and lasery. So I'm just playing a saw wave out of this with a filter on it. Pretty simple piao sound. We've got a little envelope on there and whatever. And that's what the spray sounds like. So the pinch is just the Q or the resonance value. It's really squelchy and really cool. The other uh, device is Expander, and as you might imagine, this is a stereo width tool, and it has a phase correlation meter and just a general like scope, so you can see what's kind of happening with the sound. Um, so we're just playing another saw wave here, and the phase correlation is showing one. It's just straight up mono signal, right? As we increase the amount here. We can see the gray phase correlation, which is the phase correlation before the sound had any expander applied to it. And we can see the blue signal is now floating around, you know, zero. And we can also see some cool looking shit in the middle here. <laughs> Just to demonstrate the difference, if we do something like the Haas effect, where we delay one side of the signal, just the left signal by a little bit, You can see sometimes, depending on the frequency on the note you're playing, the phase correlation dips way towards negative one. And that's bad because that means your sound is more on the sides than it is in the center. So as you can see with the expander, even at the maximum value, we've got a phase correlation of around zero. Now, the awesome thing about expander that I've built in here is the low bypass and that will just pass through any frequencies below the cutoff here. Um, it doesn't make those frequencies mono, it just passes them through. When it's all the way in the bottom position, it's off. Um, and there's also a 48 dB per octave switch. Um, with this off, it's a, just a 12 dB per octave um, filter slope. So you can see the difference here. Sometimes it might be okay to have the, a 12 dB per octave slope if you have a much higher low bypass value. But for lower low bypass cutoff values, definitely recommend turning on the times four button. Yeah, so it's a pretty simple plugin. Um, zero to 100% is your dry wet, and it also increases the stereo width over that amount. And then 100% to 200% just adds more stereo width. <laughs> So here's what the inside of the Maxwell Live device looks like for spray. It's not super complicated. We have an, an amount knob and that number goes straight into this APC object, which is a patcher that looks like this. It's just 48 of these um, APFs, all pass filters. And that's what one of these all pass filters looks like. I'll explain that in a sec. Um, and then the plugin uh, audio goes straight into the APC as well, and the filter coefficient goes in there as well. We're using the frequency and the pinch knob. Uh, they go into this filter graph, which um, makes the coefficients for an all-pass filter um, according to our frequency, position, and pinch settings. And those coefficients, it's a, it's a series of like five numbers that are like 
it's some crazy math to figure out how to actually create that on your own. So I'm just using the filter graph object to, to make it. And then that number goes in here. So in the APC, we've got APFs, a bunch of them, and they're all wired up into each other. Um, in one of these APFs, we have the left signal coming in uh, here, and that goes straight down um, into this uh, multiplication object, and the right signal does the same thing. This biquad is what actually applies the filter to the audio signal. And so it needs the coefficients. So they come in here um, and tell the filter how to do the filtering. Um, and then the amount knob number from zero to 48 comes in here. And this object ignores any number that is less than zero or above one. And uh, the way that works is the first one, it's gonna be fine because it'll be hearing like a zero to one on, at the very beginning of the knob. And then that number gets minus by one and sent out the bottom. So the next one is waiting for, it needs to hear like one to two. And then the next one needs to hear two to three to like actually do something. And what this amount number actually does is it just flips from the dry signal to the biquad signal um, using these multiplication objects. Uh, so yeah, basically this gets timesed by zero and turns off and then this gets times by one and is on um, and that just happens all the way down the list and then um, right at the very bottom it just goes out so you can imagine if the amount knob was set to zero the dry signal would just be passed through all of these objects and out the bottom and nothing would happen to it but yeah that's basically how this works just a bunch of all pass filters <laughs> Okay, so the expander max for live device is a little bit more complicated um, and I probably could have done some of this a bit more efficiently, but it works, so whatever. <laughs> I made a little diagram to show you kind of roughly what's happening to this, the audio signal as it passes through our patch here. So the audio comes in here and on the left side, the polarity is inverted using this multiplication object to negative one. And then that signal is delayed by somewhere between zero and six milliseconds. That's set by this knob here. Um, then the output of that knob goes into the scale object, which is converted from milliseconds into samples. And that is received by the delay object and it does the delay. And then it goes into some all pass filters. So the biquad is applying the all pass filter to the signal and it knows how to do the filtering because it's receiving the coefficients from this object over here and I'm creating the coefficients using a filter graph and the um, cutoff and Q values are specifically tuned based on the sample rate of your DAW so depending on whether you're in you know 96,000 hertz or or 48,000 hertz um, we're going to have a different cutoff value actually so that's what this is all about um, we have three different all pass filters um, to run through here. So it goes through all three. And then coming out of the bottom of the last one, we, we choose whether we want to either go through this low bypass or not using this toggle. So when this knob is not zero, it sends a signal to this toggle here, which flips over to the other side. Um, the cascade is similar to just having a bunch of biquads all in series but it's just more convenient to use um, because what we're doing with uh, this cascade with this filter this is a high pass filter um, and coming straight out of filter graph it's only a 6 db per octave slope it's not very sharp right but it turns out that if you just do another 6 db per octave filter at the same position then it becomes a 12 db per octave filter and the cascade can just take a list of two sets of coefficients and it just says, yeah, I'll just do both of those filters, no problem. So that's what we're doing here. We're joining a copy of the coefficients to itself and sending that to the cascade here. And when we turn the switch on um, for the times four button, um, that creates 
a 48 dB per octave um, filter slope by just joining these two again uh, over itself. So it becomes, you know, uh, two, four, six, eight filters rather than two filters. So that's how that works. So we choose whether we want to filter it or not. Um, by high pass filtering the output of this bicord, we are effectively low bypassing the, um, the stereo effect. And also I should mention that a copy of the signal goes straight through to the output. And it, that combines with our filtered, delayed polarity inverted signal in the end here. Um, over here, we have some logic to kind of set up these dry wet knobs, uh, the, the dry wet controls. So from zero to a hundred, you can see these sliders going up and down. You know, as we approach 100, we're looking closer and closer to fully wet and no dry at all. And then beyond 100, it's just all wet. But remember this, um, this uh, delay amount is going from zero all the way up to six milliseconds. So beyond 100%, which would be, which would be three milliseconds, we, we increase the amount of delay and effectively the stereo effect up to six milliseconds. So it's kind of cool because both of these knobs are like multifunctional. You know, this is a dry wet knob and an amount knob. And this is a um, where do you want your cutoff filter to be as well as a switch to turn it on and off, which is pretty cool. And then down here, I'm using uh, this little patcher, which splits the signal into its mid and side parts to output into the scopes so we can get a look at what things look like in the stereo field with our little visualizer here. And this is also where the calculation for the phase correlation meter is done. I think I know how some of this works, but uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a math nerd. Um, I added some logic here as well to make these meters disappear when there's no audio coming into the plugin, because I thought it was a bit distracting to have this like big blue bar always pushing over to the left at negative one. So, you know, the plugin uh, audio comes in here. I'm just summing to mono. And then, well, the peak amp reports the um, amplitude every 10 milliseconds. And then this um, statement figures out whether it's uh, higher than zero. And if it is, then it unhides uh, these guys. And then when it is zero, it hides them. Yeah, I realize that this is pretty nerdy. Um, this is probably not there's like way too much information for anyone who just wants to make their audio sound a bit wider, but I don't know. I had a lot of fun like learning about using Max for Live and creating this device from scratch and experimenting as well. And, you know, going way back to my essential Ableton toolbox with my Hass polarity widener that I created, it, it kind of works on the same principle as what we're doing in Expander, except as the name suggests, expands on the idea um, of taking a inverted ride signal and delaying it um, and combining that back in with the um, original signal. What's really cool about this plugin actually as well is that you can just use it as a scope and a phase correlation meter. If you have it just turned off, it's just a scope. Anyway, if you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found some of that Max for Live device stuff interesting. And I can't wait to hear some of the sounds and crazy stuff you guys make with my plugins. So thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace.